Good afternoon, everyone. How's everybody feeling this afternoon? Yes, I'm so glad to hear that. Uh, it is a pleasure and an honor to be standing here with you this afternoon and to be in attendance and to be speaking for my now seventh American, sixth American Atheist Convention. So what I'll be speaking about this afternoon is the community, one that I'm proud to be a part of and one that I have, am glad to help develop and grow. But there are some who say that this community is dead or that it's dying. Yes, boo. <laughs> now, if you are familiar with the online arena in any way, social media, as atheists, uh, we don't all have the same views on everything. We certainly have differences of opinions and certainly differences on ways that we handle things. And there's been a lot of contention lately because as any movement grows and any movement with people, there will be division. There are some, you just can't help that. But we're, I'm here to challenge that notion today that the movement is dead. And I think we all in this room challenge that. But let's, I think we need to look at, uh, think about how we look at community. Um, there are some, okay, so is this working? <laughs> okay. So, um, okay, so when we think of community, let, let's think about what we think of. We think of people who, are, who live close to each other, people who are within the same proximity, which is, there's, that, that is absolutely correct. But I'm going to give some definitions of community in context to our movement as well. So here are some other definitions of community. And uh, I might need y'all to advance that, please. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm seeing that here, I'm not sure, okay. So there's a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals that I think that applies to this community. Is that correct? Yes. Absolutely. There's also, um, yeah, I need y'all to kind of help, help me with that, please. I'm not sure what's going on with the uh, advancer. Yeah. Okay. But yes, yeah, certainly, Almost all of us in this room have to, how many people feel that sense of fellowship here at this convention? Can we please uh, give ourselves a round of applause for that? And I commend American Atheists for that, for the wonderful job that they have done with developing that sense of fellowship, particularly at the conventions, because it says a lot. Okay, yes, okay. So there's a similarity or identity. We certainly share that here as atheists, or most of us do. Yes. And joint ownership or liability, meaning that we come together, we own the communities, and also accept responsibility for them. So in looking at communities and how we build it, these are certainly some uh, principles that we, there are good foundations on that. Now, just going back a little bit, I remember when I first became involved in the community, you can count on one hand how many black folks you saw at conventions. There was certainly not that many women in attendance. There was certainly not that many Latinas or Latinos in attendance at conventions. And there certainly were only a few organizations that represented the atheist slash secular community. But now, now look, this is just a small view of what we look like. You have American atheists, you have black non-believers, you have Camp Quest, you have Hispanic American freethinkers, you have ex-Muslims of North America, 
you have the American Humanist Association, you have the Secular Student Alliance, you have Recovering from Religion, and yes, even the, 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 satanic, t the satanic Temple. Look at the number of organizations that now represent the community. And some of us, many of us work with each other. Again, I am proud to serve on the board for American Atheists. I'm also a volunteer with Recovering from Religion. So we do intersect. And we're also a member organization for the Secular Coalition with the Secular Coalition for America. And there's more. You have national, regional, local groups, and not just in the United States. We are now going international. We are now going global. So that is a good thing to understand and know. And you don't just have to support one. It is important to support more than one organization and more than one group. You also have bloggers and writers. The community is made up of so many different entities besides the groups. The bloggers, the writers, the podcasters, the organizers, who in my humble opinion, don't get the credit they often deserve. And I say we, we often don't get the credit that we deserve. But most importantly, there's people in this movement. There's people in this community. We are nothing if we don't think about the people who are involved with our groups and with our organizations and who attend our events. So please know that, again, this is a movement of people and good people. So you know the saying, there's no I in team. There is an I in community. <laughs> but it is all about we. And sometimes as a community, as atheists, as humanists, or however we want to identify, sometimes we help the homeless, like our group, our affiliate group in Charlotte does. We, like we, represent our organizations by wearing apparel and um, attending events, like our board member and Detroit affiliate, my sister Bridget does. We host various events, including supportive ones, especially around the holidays when we are ostracized and we don't feel like being around those religious family members and friends. Our allies and our non, our non-black allies in particular represent us and wear our merchandise and tell about our organization like Sybabe does. We even attend conventions and go on cruises where we party and bullshit. We party and bullshit. Come on, party and bullshit. We party and bullshit. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we even change lives. And this is unfortunately our Milwaukee, our late Milwaukee affiliate organizer who passed away suddenly in February. Um, we were proud to have him represent our organization. But he was a prime example of how our organization and, have peop and people who have encountered us have told us that we have changed and even saved their lives. But what should we be doing? Everything that I mentioned before, but if we are to sustain our community, these are some of the things that are important to our growth and development. Support is primary. Many of our organizations support fellow atheists who are either still in the closet or, and they feel ostracized. They are often the only ones in their area. They may even uh, face challenges and even bullying from believers. We should be offering resources as well, resources isn't just about finances. It's also, again, about, uh, it's about networking. It's also about connections. So there are a number of ways to look at what resources are. Information is also more important. Opportunities, paid and volunteer. That's a big one. <laughs> 
But um, there are many opportunities in this movement, in this community, to get involved um, with a number of humanitarian initiatives. And um, it's good, I've mentioned networking, but um, they are often out there. Sometimes you may have to find it and look for it, but it's important to know that they are out there. And also, we should, again, be having fun. What good is being involved in a movement if we aren't enjoying what we're doing or aren't enjoying being a part of it? That is a huge part of, of this community and what we should be doing. But here are some important things that we must remember. In the development of, in the continuing development of our community, as we encounter new atheists, as we encounter even old atheists who find us, and as we, are, and we, as we rethink what we're looking to get out of this community, here are some important things to remember. That we are still growing, and you may need to create what isn't already there. There was not a good concentrated effort to help bring out more black atheists on the ground. So guess what? We had to build it. There wasn't a group for women to help deal with the issues that secular women deal with. So guess what? It had to be built. There was a movement. There was a need for more student engagement and interaction. So guess what? It needed to be built. There wasn't a movement for ex-Muslims years ago, so it had to be built. So instead of looking around for someone else to do it, guess who it will have to be up to? You. And it is up to who else needs to support it? You do. <laughs> that is what this community should be about, taking a responsibility and accountability and initiative. Every group or community isn't for everyone. Know the difference between lead and supporting roles. I'm gonna get real for a moment. Every group or community isn't for everyone. Know the difference between lead and supporting roles. There will be times where there are certain folks who will just have to shut up and listen. <laughs> listen to the people who are actually doing the work. Listen to the folks who are coming from marginalized communities and communities who have a harder time coming out as atheists. And listen to the work that we're doing. Listen to why. Understand and know it. And don't just over talk us. Also, within your own communities, if there, there's still a lot of baggage that many atheists and non-believers need to unlearn in coming from religious communities. Some that include patriarchy and misogyny. So if there are women speaking, you need to shut up and listen. <laughs> when there are black folks talking, you need to shut up and listen. When there are students talking, you need to shut up and listen. And not just shut up and listen. Shut up, listen, understand, and revise your actions. Utilize, but don't use, your fellow organizers, members, and resources. We're still very small. <laughs> And a lot of the work tends to fall on the very few. I know my fellow organizers, no matter who you are, can relate to that. <laughs> there is a lot of there are a lot of things and expectations that that are um, that that are had by many who are coming in this community, and it's understandable because when you leave the church and when you leave your old communities, now you want to know what's next. What can this community do for me? Again, though, because we are still growing, it will be up to us to continue to work together 
utilize us, but don't use us. And that's, and that's also, there's also respo a responsibility for organizers to not overuse volunteers because then what happens? You get burned out, which does, which does happen. Be genuine, dedicated, and sufficient. Being sufficient, I cannot stress that enough because there are many people who want to get involved. There are many who are, you know, they're anxious and they're excited, but the work really comes once the lights go down. It is often very, it is often not glamorous. It can be tedious and sometimes it can be hard and long, but being consistent and actually caring about this work and about the work that people are doing is important. It cannot just be the, the racial aspect and also the, all of the aspects here cannot just be one-time conversations. They also cannot be one-time actions. They must be consistent and it takes dedication, it takes time, and it takes everything and, and everything that I've mentioned before to help continue to build it. But guess what? If you don't come correct, you will be checked. <laughs> and I'm going to go into why I say that. I'm going to go into what I mean by that. We've had people who come into this community who only think of I. You put that I in the community, they're only thinking of themselves. They're only thinking of what they can get out of it and what they, what they want from it and what they can get out of it. And we've had some tricksters come in here into this community and try to make their way and build their way up. Unfortunately, those types of people are very patternistic. And guess what? We're still a small community. We talk, especially amongst the organizers. And in, and in letting go and unraveling that religious, religious baggage, certainly we're a community of thinkers and skeptics. So guess what? You can't just tell us anything and then think it's gonna fly. Yeah. <laughs> that just doesn't work. So if you are displaying or you're exhibiting a certain type of behavior and you're trying to move up in this movement, guess what? After a while, you're gonna get put, you, you, you'll get caught out there. Someone will see you for who you are and they will, as we say, put you on blast. Yeah. <laughs> or, and it's unfortunate because as organizers, uh, there are, there are there's certain information and there's certain actions that we become privy to that is extremely unfortunate because we want to help everyone, right? We do. But unfortunately, that isn't the case. Remember the Bob bitch from last year? Whoever was in attendance last year <laughs> at my talk. Sometimes you have to say that. You know, and it's unfortunate because in this movement, again, there will have to be it's ownership and liability. And sometimes we have to own the liabilities and, let, and, and, and also figure out when to let them go. But sometimes people will show themselves out because after a while you can't get away. You can't get away with that forever. But as Victor said earlier, um, how many of you knew, how many of you thought that this was my full time? Um, this was my full time gig, the activism was full time. So in addition to developing black non-believers over the past seven years, in addition to being a wife, being a mother of three, and running this organization, I was working a full-time job. And March 28th was my last day of work. It was my last day because it is time for this black atheist woman leader to dedicate my life to this movement. But this cannot happen without you. So if you take a look at the link above my lovely picture, below my lovely picture, excuse me. <laughs> um, I've created a Patreon and I will be taking on black non-believers full time. Uh, the Patreon will consist of community building content it will also consist of my upcoming appearances, upcoming events, as well as some very, very unfiltered thoughts that I have, <laughs> which will be a lot of fun. For those of you who aren't familiar with me, I am 
very, very uh, big on, again, people. I'm also very big on the rights of LGBT, of the marginalized communities. Very sex positive, very sexual liberation. This is all very important to the growth of this community. And it is up to all of us to help keep it. I have made it my mission to help keep this movement alive. Everyone here in this room is proof that this movement is alive. It isn't dead at all. When we fight with each other, that's how we show we're alive. <laughs> when we fight for each other, that's how we know we're alive. There are, we will go through growing pains and that is okay. Growth sometimes is hard and it is painful, but it's when you learn from it and how we learn from it is what distinguishes us from the religious community. We come out better and we come out stronger. We come out more logical. We come out more critical. And that is what will help our voices in this movement, in this society. That will continue and, and we will not be stopped. <laughs> We won't be stopped. And again, there's no one way to do it. It may start small, but again, it's growing. And I'm very, very happy to be a part of this and your support is always is needed and appreciated and I am proud to be a representative for this community. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, there, I, I was told that there was time for Q&A. So if you have any questions. Yes. No one, everyone understood? I made myself clear? All right. <laughs> yes, please come up to the mic if you have a question. Clarify, sit down and shut up. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, I know you don't mean that in a hostile way, but what would you see that as being? Yes. So, as a community, we pride ourselves on our intellectual capability, what we know, how smart we are. But there are times when we have a tendency to talk at people and think that we know more than certain folks who are going through certain issues and that needs to stop. So for example, if there, if I am, if you are encountering, if there is a white person that is encountering myself um, and you wanna know why there's a need for black non-believers um, and I'm explaining it to you, I certainly expect that the reasons, and, and certainly we know what the reasons are, but if you aren't aware of it, um, it is good for the person listening to just sit back and hopefully we'll take it and understand what it is that we're saying. So that's what I mean by shut up and listen. And also, if someone is expressing a problem, um, the worst thing you can do is be dismissive. Don't dismiss anyone's problems or anyone's concerns. There is also another, that's another example of shutting up and listening. Uh, shutting up and listening. Yes. I uh, recently, in the past few years, had individuals, black uh, individuals, that came to me in uh, extreme privacy, explaining their questioning of their belief or that they are non believers. And uh, in that period, I, I found I was having to counsel them. Mm -hmm. Could you? Explain to the audience the uh, the extra problems that the black 
person who is an atheist has to deal with in their own world or their own family and the things they have to overcome mm -hmm. to, to be the atheist. So not only are we dealing with a demographic um, issue, we're also dealing with historic and traditional issues within the black community. How many of you know the statistics of how many black folks are religious? Most recently, it was 87%. 87% according to the new Pew Research statistics. And there are the, the reasons for that, again, are traditional, they're cultural, um, which is one of the reasons why, even though the number is growing, even though it's more than a handful now, there's still a very small percentage of black atheists that are in this room. There are more online, but when you come out as black and atheist, or when you openly identify, I will give an example. There was a woman who a couple of years ago told me that she did not, she couldn't believe that as a black woman, I had the nerve to identify as an atheist, for one, in front of these white devils. <laughs> so again, to um, what, yes, it, it's funny, but also think about it for a moment. When you are a person, when, when you are a person from a marginalized community as the black community, you are seen as rejecting your race. So there are other added, other added issues as to um, coming out or identifying as someone who is black. So um, yes, and, and also too, there is the, pre if you're, you aren't familiar with black church culture, <laughs> you know, you, you might wanna take a look. It's very emotional very entertaining, but also it is interwoven into the politics and almost every aspect of the black community. So we have an uphill battle here. And again, but that's another reason why I have decided to dedicate my time to this work because the visibility and the representation and the support is important. It needs to increase, it needs to happen. Yes. Uh, in addition to all of the other things that Mandisa is doing and has done, she's about to begin a really important task. Mm -hmm. American Atheist Press this year is going to begin publishing audiobooks. And the very first title that we plan to publish is going to be Madeline Murray O'Hare's Atheist Epic. And guess who the voice of Madeline Murray O'Hare is going to be in the 21st century? Now do you understand why I had to leave my job? <laughs> the demands and the requests and the movement have increased. And I'm very, very happy I'm very, very happy and humbled to know that the work that we've been doing, the work that I've been doing has been making a difference. And this is when I, I knew I was on borrowed time at my job, but part of my job was about putting things into place and execution. And that's one of the reasons why BN was so success is, is so successful. I do put a lot of the work that I've been doing into it, it's practical, it is relatable, it is about people. So just understand that about me, if you didn't already, <laughs> now you really do know. But yes, that is one of the major projects that we will be working on. And I'll be keeping you updated. Also, um, if there are, my information is out front, I appreciate that, uh, again, the platform that I have been given, my organization has been given, but now I'll be available a lot more. <laughs> so if you would like for me to appear, to come to speak to your group, let me know. I am here. Thank you.